Good afternoon, Jim Hodges here. Bella, Bella is a giant schnauzer that came in for our residency training program. She is one year old. She's a really sweet and affectionate dog, but she has probably the strongest prey drive I've ever seen in a dog. What does that mean? That basically means that anything in God's green earth that moves is gonna turn her on. It's even the sunlight reflecting her shadow on the ground, she'll want to chase it. Uh, the little flickers that can happen from a light, she wants to track it and follow it and chase it. Same with birds and butterflies and everything else. That prey drive is a strong hunting instinct that we will never ever be able to take away. We can manage it somewhat, but we always have to be on guard, okay? How do we manage it? We manage it through a lot of exercise, through a lot of structured obedience, a lot of combining the exercise and the obedience together to make her have to not only physically work, but mentally work, and then find an outlet for that prey drive, which would be a ball or a stuffed animal and throw and let her go through the, the motions of, of catching her prey, okay? Tug is not something that I would do a great deal of. I probably wouldn't do it at all unless I was the leader. And if I was the leader, I would play tug, but I would win the tug and I would put the toy up. We do not want her to best us in those situations. She also, besides her prey drive, is very uh, energetic and tends to be a uh, little willful dominant. So again, these are all candidates for you to be a strong leader, okay? Does it mean we have to intimidate, dominate, or break her spirit? It just means that when we give her a command, she has to do it. We want to praise her when she does it, and we want to lead by example. We want to make sure we praise her when she is being calm during the day. And then, of course, if we ask her to do something, we've got to tap the leash to bite her, okay? But you're not going to win any physical confrontations with her. The taps of the leash are primarily redirection only. So listen to my tone of voice, watch what happens, and let's see where we go in this. I'm going to probably end up having to bite her. Uh, we have a cat behind us, a cat over here, but we are not going to shy away from it. We're going to work through it, okay? Let's go. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to walk right by the cat. Good girl. So when she first came, there was no way that she wouldn't stretch out to the cat. In a let's go, as she started stretching that way, I would tap the leash back to me and tell her, no, let's go. When we're walking, it's very important that she's right here. Okay, we don't want her out in front, not only because of the leadership perspective that I talk about so often, but it's because when she's out in front of us, we're no longer a checks and balance. I tell a lot of my clients that at some point in time they can allow the dog to walk out in front of you a little bit more. I can't honestly say that I would feel good with that with Bella here. She needs to constantly, when you're out and on the move, be by your side. Now, we'll come up to a cat. If we wanted to check things out, we would always stay a safe distance, okay? You have to be ready for that prey drive to kick in and maybe she lunged. Only if you knew better would you get closer, okay? Good girl. She looked up at me, I wanted to praise her. So again, the let's go is tapping parallel to the ground in the direction we want her. So if she got out in front, I would tap back and then tell her no or ah, let's go. She started going that way, I would tap this way. No, let's go. Every time I bid or tap the leash, I repeated the command, I would come back and give her a little bit of praise afterwards. Sit. Good girl. Sit means sit. If she didn't sit just then, I would have tapped the leash straight up above her head and told her, no, sit. And then I would have come back and praised, okay? Good girl. And she has to hold that until I release her. Break. Good girl. So here I am. This may be important, may not. It has helped her a little bit because she is treat driven. Yes, treats can be very important with her right now to help her. We're not using the treats to, to lead her to do what we want. You notice I gave her a treat after the fact. I'm doing things to try to help uh, enable our relationship, if you will. The one thing about prey-driven dogs is at some point in time a treat's not going to get it. It really isn't. If there's prey there, she's going to want to go get the prey rather than have the treat. That's where you being the leader is going to be the last line of defense, and you're going to need to be able to make sure she knows that you are always in control. Let's go. Come on, sweetheart. Sit. 
at a girl. Down. Hand signal from in front for the down. Same with the sit. We tell her down. She's got to stay in the down until we release her, okay? If she did not go down, I'd have reached up and tapped the leash. No. Down. Straight in front of her, okay? And it would have been no. Down. And then I would have come back and praised her. If I wanted to give her a treat right now, I would do it because she's been holding the down. Break. Let's go. Good girl. So, we have the DOW from in front and the sit. Sit. Down. Hand signal from the side. Good girl. Same thing. If she started to get up, it would be no down. But when we tell her down, she's in a down until we release her. Break. Let's go. Sit. Good. Now, the one time I'll use a treat at any time, as long as I know my dog wants it, would be the come off leash, and in this case, even the come on leash in the beginning. Come. She comes, she sits. Now, you notice in the beginning, I may have given her the, the treat as soon as, she, as soon as she sat, but now I'm gonna let her hold it for a minute, let her see that she's supposed to come and sit. And a girl. I give her the treat. I'm not gonna let her pick it up off the ground if she dropped it. I think she got it. Good girl, let's go. So off leash, I wouldn't even begin to uh, tell her to come right out of the gate. Only off le on leash, sit. Let's do this one more time. Come. She comes, she sits. And a girl, I'm proud of you. Break. Off leash, she's running around in your backyard. I would try to get her attention. Could be that stuffed animal or that ball. And another type of ball you can use is one that has treats in it as well. As it falls out, it gives a little game for her. But I may have a stuffed animal, a treat, whatever. I'll get her attention. She sees it. She commits to me. That's when I would have her come. For you that, uh, that, is, that are not Bella's owners, you can see me talk about come on my website. Okay? Let's go. Next thing is the PLACE command. Play. All the way on. Good. If she had not gotten all the good girl. Good girl. I was getting ready to bite her. If she had not gotten all the way on, I would have bit her and told her no place. If she'd have walked off then, I'd have gone no place. She needs to be on this bed. She can lay down, sit down, stand up, read a book. I don't care. She needs to stay there until I will allow her up. She can have a toy. She can have one of our antlers. She can have anything she wants while she's there. She can do anything she wants. She doesn't do a down. She doesn't do a sit. She doesn't do any commands but place, which is relax and learning and knowing that you put her there. Right. She can do that for an hour or two at a time easily, okay? So if she does make a mistake, what I will do a lot of times with any dog, I will come back and repeat that command two or three times correctly in a row, okay? That's just to come back and reaffirm what I wanted for my dog. Although she did do it right, but it was a little slow, I am gonna do the place again. Place, try to get at an angle that you can see. Good girl, good girl. And once she's, no, no, place. So now we're gonna do it again, right? We're gonna come back and do it one more time. Good girl, play. Good, good girl. Good girl. So I would repeat that two or three times in a row, okay? So sit. Next thing we do is the heel command. The heel command is that little box. No, sit. Is that another thing about sit right now? We never keep a big bone dog or any dog in a sit for a, a long, long time. 30 seconds a minute is plenty. I don't like to put that pressure on their hip. But our heel is she's in this box, heel. Her job is to stay in this box with us. I step off, she comes right back into the box. I stop and she sits. I step off, she should hold it. Good girl. Break. That's my release. Okay, so next thing, come on, Hup. come on. This ah, girl, good girl. Break. That was one of the hardest commands for her, believe it or not, because she's so long and big, she was couldn't balance herself real well on the uh, stump, but she kept working at it and she got it. Uh, last thing, what I would do my best to do for the first week or two is put her in 5, 10, 15 minute down stays. 
down. And then I could say, stay. When I told her to stay, she can now smell the ground, she can now chew on a bone, she can even lay on her side. She can, in essence, pack her bag, she's gonna be there a while, okay? She doesn't have to pay attention, wait for my next command. This is important for a dog that tends to be dominant and uh, stubborn in nature, okay? We're letting her know we're the boss, because when we put a dog in a down, that's the most submissive they are. Again, when I say submissive, you see I'm not trying to intimidate or dominate, but I am letting her know what I expect her to do goes. Now, break. normally I don't keep her in a stay. I keep her to stay at least two minutes, up to 10, 15 minutes, okay? But I don't use the word stay haphazardly. So I don't say sit, stay, down, stay. It's sit, you sit there till I tell you you can get up. It's down. You down till I tell you you can get up. I say stay when I want you to pack your bags and be there a while, okay? Also may you stay at a door so she doesn't cross the threshold of the door. Stay. If she comes through the door, no, 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 stay, and we come back and work again. Good girl. Let's go. I can't think of too much more. I think I've pretty much covered everything here. If you have any questions, you pick up the phone and call me. Uh, 336-945-3232, 336-945-3232, Jim Hodges, jimhodgesdogtraining.com. She's a good girl. She's going to be a good girl. It's just, this is just one of those dogs we have to stay on top of, and I know our owners can do it. They have uh, come a long way in the few times that we've gotten together since she's come, and you can see their confidence growing, and you can see that they understand the need to be a leader, and I think they're probably actually seeing a newfound respect from her to them, okay? Thank you so much and take care. Bye-bye.